Let's start with this. San Diego has now seen its highest jump in deaths in our county. 15 more people have died from coronavirus, bringing the total to 87 this morning. The number of confirmed cases in San Diego is up 109 to 2,434. County Supervisor Greg Cox says it's a grim reminder that we are not out of danger yet, and the South Bay is seeing the highest rate of cases. San Ysidro saw them double this past week, the highest growth in the county, while Otay Mesa holds the most with 107 cases. Chula Vista and National City have the highest infection rates, but Mayor, M Mayor Mary Casillas Salas points out the data only tracks where a person lives, not where they contracted the virus. In fact, we're going to talk with more, more with her here in the next half hour live. Health officials are now evaluating if additional measures need to be taken in the South Bay, as many of the hardest hit zip codes are near the border. As for the impact the virus is having globally, more than two and a half million cases now, a third of those cases here in the U.S., with more than 825,000. More than 45,000 deaths now to report. But the good news here, we have seen more than 75,000 people recover from this. As states across the country are weighing whether or not to reopen, some areas there's a new threat that's emerging. Fire season, and Stella has more on that. Yeah, Eric, we do have warm temps on the way, and there is an elevated risk of fire danger. So firefighters are taking on a different approach during the COVID-19 pandemic. News 8's Chris Grow is live at the Cal Fire San Diego headquarters with that part of the story. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning, Stella. And right around this time, as we approach peak fire season, we'll hear from Cal Fire and their public awareness campaign about how we can prepare ourselves to prevent a fire, but then also how to respond to a fire. And that all still applies during this pandemic. But there's now another issue that they want the public to be aware about, and that's how they need you to still stay home under this stay at home order. In fact, look at their Instagram page they put out this post with the simple caption we stay we go to work for you please stay home for us and the idea behind all of this and the hope is that if everyone does their part by staying home the likelihood of exposure of the coronavirus amongst fire crews and two fire crews will be lower now already they've been doing their part at work and inside the firehouse they're practicing social distancing they've changed how they train and as you saw in that picture using face coverings when possible but other communities in california and across the u.s have had firefighters quarantined due to the virus so the idea is that if everyone stays home they lower down that exposure rate and they keep their firefighters healthy. According to Cal Fire Captain Thomas Schutz, it's all about limiting exposure. Guys at the stations have been doing everything they can to keep things clean and, and keep uh, social distance between themselves. Um, the calls have been less lately just because there's not as many people out on the roads and out and about. And so it's helped limit our exposure. It's helped limit the community's exposure. And so that's a good sign, but that doesn't mean that we can rest on other of the uh, strategies that we can use to try to prevent the actual fires from happening. So Cal Fire says that it is the perfect time right now that many of us have probably never had this much time at home to make sure that we have defensible space, to make sure that you have a go bag ready, an escape route planned, and to make sure that you're clearing any dry brush that could be around your home. Back to you. Chris, thank you for that information. And now to three things you need to know today. Number one, face coverings are now required in public in National City. Yeah, council members voted unanimously last night in favor of the emergency order. The new rule applies to National City residents anytime they leave their home and in any public setting. And number two, San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner is bracing the city for steeper budget cuts. Yesterday, he announced an additional $50 million loss due to the coronavirus pandemic. The mayor recently announced an expected $250 million shortfall for 2021, but now says that has ballooned to $300 million. And number three, the Navy could announce the fate of a fired USS Theodore Roosevelt captain as early as today. Captain Brett Crozier was removed after he pleaded for help when coronavirus was spreading on board. At least 710 sailors aboard the ship tested positive. One sailor died. USS Theodore Roosevelt is docked at Naval Base Guam. Eric.
All right, Stella, thanks. President Trump plans to sign an executive order today, temporarily halting immigration into the U.S. for 60 days. The order would apply to those seeking permanent residency. The president says the order takes care of American workers laid off due to the pandemic. The Senate passed a new round of funding for small businesses hurting from the coronavirus pandemic. The $484 billion measure is now in the hands of the House and is expected to pass there later this week. Included in the funding is help for hospitals and money to ramp up testing. New restrictions should help to narrow down and get money to mom and pop stores who desperately need it. Who A lot of them have complained that they didn't dig really get much from the first uh, bill that passed, and uh, they should have. Later today, Governor Newsom plans to provide an update on when our state could reopen. He defined six key areas last week that would have to be met for statewide restrictions to be relaxed. They included an in-depth look at coronavirus testing. The governor scheduled to hold a live update starting at noon, and you can watch it all live right here on CBS 8 and on our sister station, The CW. You know, it's images like these that remind us how special our environment, our environment really is. Today is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. With the coronavirus, our daily routines and way of life have changed drastically, and it has affected our environment. These are several lessons we can take away on this Earth Day, and we want to show you the silver lining. News 8's Netta Runport joins us live with local environmental improvements. Netta. Yeah, on this Earth Day, we thought we'd uh, take a look at the state of our environment right now. Of course, none of us want to be suffering through this COVID-19 pandemic, but certainly the stay-at-home orders are changing the way we go about our daily lives. So we wanted to take a look at the impacts here locally in San Diego. Have our pollution levels gone down? And yes, they sure have. Take a look. Taking a step outside these days can feel like such a breath of fresh air. That's because it actually is. While San Diegans are forced to get innovative in ways we never thought we'd have to, at least we're noticing a bit of improvement in emissions, according to San Diego County's air pollution control officer. I've been doing this for 38 years. I'm an eternal optimist. I think this is a good learning experience for us to know that we can do things differently. And it's the things we're doing differently by staying at home that means far fewer cars and trucks on the road, less ships, trains, and planes, too. And Bob Card points out nitrogen dioxide, the stuff that turns the sky brownish and burns your eyes and lungs, is down by 26% during the peak commute in Chula Vista when you compare March this year to last year. Countywide, the measurement for diesel exhaust is down about 14%. It shows we can change and we can move that air pollution meet, meter, the needle, I should say, downward quite a ways. And why that's important? Well, ozone pollution, is, it's a corrosive gas that actually, if you think about a sunburn on your skin, it can have that same type of effect on the lungs. It can also cause cancer. The American Lung Association put San Diego sixth on the list for worst air in the U.S., with an average of six weeks of unhealthy air a year. So we do have room for improvement. Climate change is making it clean, harder to clean up our air in terms of more extreme heat and extreme and catastrophic wildfires. The expert on that, geochemist Ralph Keeling, the son of the late pioneer of climate science, Charles Keeling, who founded the Keeling Curve. That's been the measure of CO2 in our atmosphere since the 1950s. Our atmosphere is basically the cumulative waste pile of the Industrial Revolution all the way to present. So to see any clearing of that waste pile, he says not likely in our lifetime. I think people are waking up to the, the dangers. Um, at the same time, we're emitting more than ever. So we're actually racing into this problem faster than ever. So we need to, we need to figure out how to put the brakes on. So it is, it is a flattening the curve problem. Yeah. When we're talking about this particular curve, it can also be flattened. For example, our emissions from cars and trucks would need to stay down about 10% for one year for a small deviation. And according to the many experts who study our pollution in our atmosphere, it would be well worth it. At some point, I got a view all the way down the coastline, way down past uh, Rosarita to the point down there. Uh, and it was just so stunningly clear. It's like you could just touch it. I don't ever remember seeing it. Was, there was not a particle in the air. So if you've already figured out how to make those Zoom meetings work for you and you have your in-home office all set up, then maybe it's worth thinking, could you continue to work this way? I think what this has shown us is that we actually can telework or telecommute, whatever you want to call it, 
and get the cars off the road and still be successful. Because when we're talking about life post pandemic, some of this new norm may be less painful to embrace if we realize it is in fact beginning to clear the air. You know, and a couple of the experts I spoke with say, you know, this is all giving us a glimpse at what our earth and our air could look like and feel like if we were to go all electric. So it's at least something to strive for right now. Of course, we are definitely dealing with challenging times, but there is that silver lining. At least our pollution, our emissions are down here in the San Diego area. I'll send it back to you. De uh, definitely a beneficial year for Earth Day, that is for sure.